Knuckles, Cracked, Joan, Betrayed, Abe, Huge f***ing Simp. Yep, it's Clone High Time. What is it about this Canadian-American adult animation that makes it so memorable, memeable and enjoyable even today, although it was literally made in the early 2000s? Well, to make a long story short, it's just really good. The show indulges in absolutely absurd humor and satire without making it tiresome and annoying because it actually blends it with, like, real character development and genuine emotional tones. The soundtrack is incredible, the writing is off the wall and witty, it's just an all-around well-made adult cartoon. But how does all of this relate to today's youth, aka the Zoomers, and the culture of the 21st century? Let's dive in, shall we? Roll the intro. So the show's premise is pretty much weird ass anime bullshit, but I don't know, somehow they pulled it off. Basically, there's a shady government experiment to create clones of famous historical figures with the intent of utilizing them in the US military. The clones are now a bunch of greasy teenagers attending a hormonal mess of a high school together, and you can pretty much imagine where that goes. Our MC is none other than the clone of former US President Abraham Lincoln, now an awkward nice guy. His friend, French revolutionist Joan of Arc, now an edgy goth girl, is obviously head over heels for him, but he's just way too f***ing slow to realize. Instead, Abe simps for Cleopatra, the former ruler of the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt, and now a huge beachy thought. What the f*** is wrong with you, Abe? Get your shit together right the f*** now, you mother f***ing piece of- <laughs> However, she's into another former US president. John F. Kennedy, aka JFK, who is now a stereotypical Chad Ja kind of guy, and also hilariously retarded. Does this sound like annoying teenage melodrama and trash TV yet? Because that's basically what the show makes fun of. Constantly. For support and comedic relief we got Indian statesman Mahatma Gandhi, wow that sure went well, as well as a bunch of other more minor characters like genetic defect Marie Curie and depressed Van Gogh. Clone High is in many regards counterculture. It satirizes and parodies all sorts of social issues, real life conflicts and cultural tropes while still maintaining a decent amount of self-awareness. For an example, look no further than episode 3, when the principal's robot Mr. Butlertron diagnoses Gandhi with ADD. ADD? Am I... dying? No, it's ADD. Attention Deficit Disorder, you also have ADHD, it's hyperactive cousin. Oh, wow, I, I need a minute to think about this. Hey, check out this extra flappy skin on my nut. What is that? Afterwards, there's this musical number mocking how people often ignorantly gossip about these sorts of things and make them out to be something that they're really not. Did you hear? Did you hear? Gandhi is ADD. Incurable disease. Did you hear? Did you hear? Gandhi is contagious. Totally outrageous. A disease with initials. That's the worst kind. In episode 2, Abe and JFK compete in the elections for student body president, and Principal Scudworth decides to turn the school into profit by getting a sponsorship deal. The moral company to jump on this opportunity is Extreme Blue, a power snack company which aggressively markets type 2 diabetes to teenagers by being as much r slash fellow kids as humanly possible. Extreme Blue! It's a power snack! Stick it in your face hole! Sick! Tight! Cyber awesome! I see. Abe also falls into this trap and agrees to sell out in order to sponsor his elections campaign, but later realizes his grave mistake and stands up for his ideals. This is of course making fun of slimy marketing practices often used by greedy corporations who market to teenagers without regard for anything but profit. Episode 7 introduces us to Gandhi's, uh, profound music career that just happens to also be satirizing vapid, derivative, hedonistic and over-sexualized pop rap music. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Wow, Clown High was sure early to the party on this one. So let's get back to the show's humor for a bit. If I had to describe it with words, I'd probably call it absurd, dark and surreal. It wasn't the only show at the time to play in this sort of comedic sandbox, but unlike, say, South Park's edginess or Daria's cynicism, Clown High's humor makes it look more like a huge ironic meme than a cartoon. Some of the jokes straight up sound like they were ripped from Reddit or 4chan or Twitter or whatever, which obviously fueled this show's meme power. The amount of extremely retarded yet also hilarious memes about the show just seems to pile up. It's just so easy to meme the living shit out of it. Here, watch. Yes, it is I, Ara, JFK from Adult Cartoon Clone High. I have committed multiple acts of tax fraud and human rights violations in Bosnia Herzegovina. And by human rights violations, I mean high impact sexual violence. Anyway, Clone High probably wasn't the first to ever try to pull this kind of humor off, but they definitely committed to it much more than anyone else did and managed to further its potential. That's probably part of the reason it stood for so long and influenced other works, notably Total Drama Island for example, which borrows quite a bit from Clone High. The creators obviously had their eyes forward to the future and were confident enough to take risks with this kind of innovative, almost experimental TV. These risks, however, proved to be just as big as the show's creative potential. Unfortunately, the decisions made by the team brought the show not only its success, but also its downfall. As I've mentioned before, the portrayal of Gandhi in the show led to controversy in India, which escalated and led to the early cancellation of the show. Uh, I think it's coming back... <laughs> Uh, the 2000 and, 2000 and never. Yeah, <laughs> it was too cool. They canceled it. This is too cool. The children, yeah. uh, their heads will explode. There was actually a hunger strike in India over the Gandhi <laughs> character, which they felt, if though they'd never seen it, they were they were offended that it was uh, you know, portraying him as eating junk food. And, and the, the FCC parties. chair of India uh, and Gandhi's grandson both got a little bummed out about it, and um, tried and told Tom Freston, who at the time was in charge of Viacom. And, and uh, it turns out that a billion person market in India <laughs> is w worth a lot of money to a huge Fortune 500 company. <laughs> it sucks particularly since the last episode is a damn cliffhanger. The creators Phil Lord and Christopher Miller went on to have a pretty successful career in film, becoming known for writing and directing Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and The Lego Movie as well as for directing both Jump Street films. They obviously haven't forgot about their origins, however, since they've been obviously pushing for Clone High to get back on screens. For example, here's a Clone High easter egg from the 2018 Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie, which they produced. The pressure from the creators, combined with the recent meme uprising among Zoomers, actually worked in the end, however, since the show is apparently getting a reboot on MTV. It probably won't pick up where the original left off, I'd expect a fresh new thing created through the lens of the original, but since the OG creators are on board, I'm optimistic about it nonetheless. We'll just have to sit tight and see where that goes. Did I mention the soundtrack? I'm kinda of biased because it literally has some of my favorite artists and songs of that era on it, including artists I've talked about on this channel before but it's actually pretty diverse. It has alternative rock, indie, emo, pop-punk, metal, hardcore, and so much more on it. Most of the artists are relatively underground and or unknown, so it just adds to the show's fresh, unique counterculture vibe. The theme song was written and performed by the alternative rock band Abandoned Pools, and it slaps hard, let me tell you. Entertaining. 
You feel the chills yet? I sure do. <laughs> the original background music is also pretty good. Some of it was also made by Abandoned Cools, while the rest appears to be by Mad City Productions, who later went on to write music for shows like South Park and The Osbournes. But here, have a little taste of some of the songs for yourself. Army Sergeant Fathers, Father, spent 20 years in prison. Trends and internet memes come and go. One day or the other, teenagers are gonna get tired of these memes and tired of Clone High. In fact, it already seems like the storm of renewed interest in it that Rage in September is coming down. The reboot is probably going to make these numbers spike, and it will probably have an influence on the show's legacy and memory, for better or for worse. For me, Clone High is about innovative, non-conforming TV that takes risks in order to fulfill its creative vision. But it's also about the search for one's place, the bittersweetness of youth and relationships, about iconic one-liners and countless memorable moments. These are the things that make the show so influential, the things that make it not only grow but also stick on you, even after you've finished watching. And that's just what I look for in TV, really. I was eaten from not aiming for the truck. Have a good night, dudes. Thanks for watching. This is where I shamelessly plug all the unimportant details and trivia facts I had left over from the main script and wanted to tell you about but couldn't fit anywhere else. Remember how I said the premise of Clone High sounds kinda like anime? Well apparently there's an actual manga from 2008 that basically borrows its ideas. It's called Hokago no Charisma or After School Charisma and it also features Kennedy and Joan of Arc as well as other characters such as Hitler, Sigmund Freud, and Elizabeth I, among many others. Christopher Miller, voice of JFK and one of the creators, has acknowledged the Clone High meme phenomenon on Twitter and used the momentum to encourage Americans to vote in the 2020 elections. Thank you, Chris. Very cool and, uh, our, uh, good. In episode 9, there's a part where JFK crashes into a PDA meeting through the skylight and utters this. The audio is reversed, of course. When you reverse it back, he says, I am talking backwards and telling you to watch Clone High. And for us to get an Emmy, I'm saying that backwards. Because it's sneaky. Very clever indeed. However, a more aggressive approach would have probably been better. Just look at Family Guy and their shenanigans. You guys aren't just the best friends I've ever had. You're also the best comedy. Aww. Great job, everyone. If that don't get us the Emmy, nothing will. Well, that's it for today, folks. See you next time.